Hi, my name is Dr. Christina Rahm, and I'm the founder of Under the Red Chandelier. I've worked for the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical industries. I've worked for governments and corporations, but I still have this burning passion when it comes to music and art and fashion and design. And I realized I have a lot to share. I want to share the travel and the fashion, the art, the music I grew up with, as well as what I've experienced. As I traveled, I picked up different colors and different designs and different things that I brought back. In today's world, we have all this conflict. It doesn't matter what their religion is. It doesn't matter what their political view is. For all the creators out there, for all the scientists, from all the artists, for all of you guys, come join us on this series. We're here to connect. We're here to learn. Hi there, everyone. This is Christina Rahm, and this is Under the Red Chandelier. However, this is another unique situation because we have to have Consuelo Vanderbilt back because we have multiple podcasts. We're getting ready to showcase Cure the Causes as well. Um, it's called Dr. Christina and Rahm Cure the Causes, which is about creating solutions in this world. And then Under the Red Chandelier is more about fashion, design, art, music, which are both because we're in different projects together. Yes. But since this is the first time they're going to see you, I really want you to talk about you and who you are and anything you want to share. Because obviously you have the name and you have the family, and I bet everyone says that to you. Um, but you're this bigger than life person. And one of the things I really love is what you're doing for philanthropy and what you're doing to use your talent, to use your background to really provide solutions. So I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself because you're going to have people all over the world that really don't know who the Vanderbilts are, but they're because they're from other countries and they're going to be able to hear about that family starting to do. Oh, well, thank you so much. And it's an honor to be with you and my goodness for everything that you do. It's truly, so you're extraordinary. So well, we're doing this stuff together now. Yes, I know. <laughs> we're in this together. We yeah. are. Yeah. Bonded. Yeah. Life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's many questions all in one. So yeah, forgive me if That's I, a, no, 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 it's <laughs> if a I forget or, yeah. I'm going to come back to you. I'm known for throwing repeat. a lot out there. Okay, and just, <laughs> yeah. just forgive me. I'll come yeah. back to you guys. Um, so uh, let's go back into the beginning. So um, I am, my name is Consuelo Vanderbilt Austin, uh, the original Cornelius Vanderbilt. That's the yeah. direct descendant. Um, my great, 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 great grandfather um, started with $100 that he asked his mother and he went, I don't know if you know the story. I don't it's know the story. pretty profound, I must I, say. I, I know some of it, but I'd love to hear it from you. Yeah. And um, and he asked for this $100. And from this $100, he actually created one of the biggest shipping railroad empires in the world. And the to incredible this to this day. Yeah. And it created Grand Central and many other things and transportation. And, you know, and he really... I would say, obviously, not knowing him, um, was a tyrant. In the <laughs> was he? I, that's from what I've heard. I mean, back in the day, I mean, who, who couldn't be in that generation, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, ruthless. But I think he just had such a vision for, yeah. for an understanding of what transportation meant at that time. Yeah. Which, again, like really having nothing and knowing what he needed to do in order to create that. So yeah. um, that has always been in my blood. And, um, and I'm very proud to to come from that legacy. Um, so I went a completely different direction from my family and I became a singer which songwriter. Which is good. Which is totally good. <laughs> so why not do something completely different? Become the artist. Yeah. So I became a singer songwriter. And a uh, successful one. Thank you very much. Please tell them because you, you've you done a lot as a singer songwriter. I, so um, I'm very grateful. I am a billboard recording artist. My last Five singles did go to top ten. My last single was number five in the U.S. And people don't know that. <laughs> we had to showcase very, that because we want everyone to listen to your music. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I love music more than anything. It's um, my heart, my soul. Um, and actually, when my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, it was one of the greatest things that my band and I did. We wrote a song, and we wrote a song for the American Cancer Society that we toured with that song, and we were able to give back. So that to me, I think. That's the greatest thing that we can do as artists to be able to actually give back. You so, know, I've been in oncology research for years. Did I you know, know that? I did. Yeah. Yes, and I, I did. 
So it's hard when you do investigator sponsored trials because you get to to create and have new drugs, new products mm-hmm. that no one has used. Um, but then the consequence sometimes people die in the trials, right? But you are able to help people. And I'm very thankful for that experience. And I think that's what led me, just so you know, mm. to what I'm doing. I loved, I had cancer. Uh, I I know how horrible it is to be scared you're going to die. Mm. I know how horrible it is for a family. And to be able to have pharmaceuticals, I think is a blessing. But to, if you can approach it naturally, which mm. I've gotten to see in all these countries, and I've got to experience it, it's another step in the right direction because it takes a lot to fight that battle, as you know. When did you have cancer? I had, when I was pregnant with actually my oldest son who's here, I had uh, a partial molar pregnancy and then it metastasized throughout my body. So I had a pituitary prolactinoma, a serum glomyelia syrinx, which they found when I was pregnant with my daughter because at first they didn't find it, um, in the spinal cord. And then I had melanoma, squamous, basal, and all types of like fibroid. I had all kinds of surgeries, all kinds of things, yeah. By the way, most people could never say these words out loud, which I could never reiterate back to her, what she just uh, said. My God, those, I mean, the fact that, like, I cannot believe you even endured any of that. Oh, my God. Like, that's so terrifying. It is, but guess what? I'm here. Mm-hmm. And so, you know what I say? I say, you can't, you don't know who's going to live, right, yeah. when they have a diagnosis. But I also say, there's things that we can do, because we know now that these genetics that are passed on to mm-hmm. our children, mm-hmm. It's an epigenetic that comes into play because a lot of times environmental toxins. Mm. So you've got to get rid, like when people tell me the environment's not toxic and that we don't have issues with our environment, I'm like, you're completely wrong. We do because the problem is when you have a nuclear war or use Agent Orange or you use GMOs, I could go on and on and on. Mm. It doesn't leave the stratosphere. So not only is it in the air, land, and water, it's everywhere. So let's say a bomb is is dropped in Chernobyl or in Hiroshima, it affects all of us. It, it doesn't just affect one area. When people try to tell me, oh, but that was really far away, I'm like, no, it's impacted our fish. <laughs> it's impacted our birds. It's everywhere. So I've really been on this journey since then. You know, I was in my 20s mm-hmm. and I thought I would not get, I can't get too emotional. I didn't think I'd be able to raise my son. And so I, I'm like, you have, we have to do something. And I, this is one of the reasons I love what we're doing with EWA, like the European Women's Association, what what Karen's, Karen Floyd's doing, what all these women are doing to really raise awareness for issues. You can't solve everything, right? Mm-hmm. But you have to try to start with doing the best that we can for our world and our environment. And um, especially when something like that happens to you. Yeah. Right. And that you're it, able, it changes it you. changes you. It, it changes does. you. Like people ask me, you're always working so hard. You always have this this mission. I know for a fact that that wouldn't have happened. This There's, would not be me. No, I'm just being be honest. You. I wouldn't. I, it would 100%. not. And no. like with your mom, your mother, this caused you to really make a mission of helping in this area. It did. Ovarian cancer. It became. You know, there was this incredible organization called the Ovarian Cancer Coalition of Greater mm-hmm. California. And this wonderful woman called Gail McKenna, who had literally ovarian cancer for 35 years, yeah. which is like an extreme. I mean, I mean, it's really yeah, unheard that's, of. That's absolutely unheard of. Um, and because ovarian cancer is extremely hard to. 35 years is like unheard of. I don't mean to give. I don't no, want to no, no. give. Not we don't want to say anything. No, that yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it can happen. Absolutely, it can yeah. happen. But everyone needs to know it is all about early detection. Absolutely, always. Always, always, always. Did your mother have any signs? She did. And one of the things about this is that she had had a pap smear. And because she was very young at the time, she was 49. And my sister had literally just graduated high school. And she went in and she had an abnormal pap. And the doctor said, oh, don't worry about it. Just go and have a good time. And she waited. And she waited six months. And she just waited too long. Yeah. And when she came back, she had ovarian cancer stage 3C. And so sadly enough, I mean, she battled for four years. But my mother made, and and I mean this in the most profound, extraordinary way, my mother made dying okay. She made it the most amazing, um, and, and there are no words. She just, she made it, for all of us, she made it okay, okay. to watch because it wasn't, as painful as she, as, as much as pain as she was in, whether it be going through chemo, going through radiation, 
she never looked as though she was suffering. She didn't. She didn't. And it was much How more. How did she do that? She just. Her, her strength and her, her kind of North Star, her, you know, her yeah. guiding light was so strong. And actually her spirit and everything that she's managed to do, I would say post-death has been so profound. Right? And I really mean that. So anyway, just so Gail McKenna, this amazing woman, when I found her, when I found the Ovarian Cancer Coalition of Greater California, it gave me such an amazing network of women to actually help my mother, to help the research, um, the things that I didn't know about. I then traveled a lot to Washington and started to be able to really understand and work with a lot of the other organizations because everything's so spread out um, to really start to understand about research oncologists. Yeah be able to help my mother and to and to start to help a lot of the other women because yeah. again you feel like you're in the abyss you feel like you're so you alone do. um so many of these female cancers i mean they call it the silent killer because they're really there's no it's, it's hard to explain to people because people say to me well people care people don't want to talk about it actually i don't they mean don't, that rudely no, they just true. don't want to talk about they don't it. and then and then as a female you're always trying to solve everything and so you don't want to bear you don't want to burden people either mm -hmm. and so it's really hard it's not what people think it's it's and i don't know if you know this but it's in the science field mm -hmm. we've spent 70 percent less on these types of issues i know <laughs> and and, and for me it's been a public i mean it's a mission for me in fact we have one of the products at root is called zero in mm -hmm. and it's for focus but i actually started what i was interested in because I had been at Pfizer when Viagra launched. I was, I know wow. this is kind of a little bit lighthearted. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, but yes. I was, <laughs> isn't this light? Isn't everyone laughing? <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. But I, I was looking at what about women? Yeah. Like, what about women? And it was always as a research scientist, whether it was ovarian cancer or whether it was um, cervical or whether it was even female pleasure, anything, mm -hmm. I thought it was important mm -hmm. because we're here, you know? And so it was, and I never think of, of women as a victim. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I feel like, what can we do to really empower each other? How can we make this better? Your mom was on a journey that I'm just being honest with you. You've used your family name, your talents, your blessings, right? You've got these gifts to help your mom. So you say that her, Legacy has lived on, but partially that's because of, of you all making sure that it's it does. True. Yeah, it's true. I, I so believe in that. Yeah, yeah, because you knew how important she was to this world. Hundred percent. So yeah. I'm sorry that you, you went through that because it's not so even. Much. It's a. I don't even. You know, it could easily be my children sitting here. So I understand. No, but look what you managed to do with your own life and everything that you went through, and you know your journey. And so, we, we don't have a lot of time, so you've got to use every second. We're trying to do something to. To, to help and give and back to go. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, so from there, you know, and just being an artist and having this extraordinary journey of an artist, an artist, but also a model. Yeah. Like, listen, you've been on the runway. You've been famous. <laughs> Everybody in my, my office God. is totally <laughs> so the no. shortest model in the history of modeling. I've just said, <laughs> I, 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 and and I'm proud of it. No, I, think I like you to be the cover and, of magazines. Yes, but I'm just saying, at five seven, you know, it's like. You, you know, like walking the cow. My favorite thing is to be five seven and to be around six foot one. You know what I mean? And I'm like looking up at them, going, eh, "Well, do you, do you think I look short in comparison? I don't think I look really that short." <laughs> They're like, "Yes, you and are." Like, I, and I'm like, "I need stilts. <laughs> don't my stilts look great?" <laughs> so, but you yes. used all of that to, yes. to give back and help. No, I'm yes. kidding. You've used but I all just, this talent. But no, but I just I love it. It's so much fun. And, right. Just and I love being creative and I love to do anything that I can do. Just I'm adventurous. And, um, and then I started uh, again the, between the entrepreneurial. You're and answering artist. my long question. In the I beginning. am. It's, it's all happening. <laughs> I See, like it. Yep. back to it. Yep. Um, and then I actually created a jewelry line called Homage, um, and actually an homage to the five generations of the women in my family. Wow. So I launched a jewelry line with HSN greatest thing I've ever done really oh my oh my god so basically it was uh an inspired by collection so it yeah. was taking the real pieces and then making I, I know that face but making inspired by oh I love a it pearl collection right right and and so it was each one of these it. stories my grandmother my great-grandmother 
and we would basically say, you two for $49.99 could feel like a princess for a day. I love just, that though. I was, no, I was signed because I was thinking, I want those pieces. <laughs> me too. Those, I'm like, you don't, don't you, Leslie, those basic yeah. pieces? Yeah. And little. you just, I'm like, not wanting to travel with real jewelry, right? All yeah, those no, that's very true. And you have 30 seconds to take someone who's literally with their child washing dishes and scream for them to come and like want to buy these pieces. Yeah. So I mean, it was just, it was so much fun. I just, I, I, loved, I loved every second of it. I never wanted it to end. And I'm like, you know, it's performing in front of 250,000 people to doing that. There is no training because it's like being a puppeteer. Yeah. Like what you're doing and trying to, you know, like overselling. So what's your favorite of all the things you've done? Oh, I, I wouldn't even, I mean, music is always in, in, my, is in my blood and my soul and performing and writing. And what's your favorite song? That I've ever written? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. God. Because it's like doing art. You're yeah. doing art. I mean, so you, there's, you've got to have a favorite. My husband and I were actually, we were in a fight and we wrote a song together called Why, right? Yeah. And it was the craziest thing to actually, to talk in the midst of this terrible fight, right? And we just started writing the song together. And it was actually the greatest way to work through this argument. And so... Actually, it, probably this, yeah, it was really inspiring. I'm like, it's just an amazing way to, again, like what music and the yeah. way that being creative can come. Yeah, because through. marriage is hard. So any song that keeps a marriage together, it's, it's got to be is, is, is marriage tough? Is marriage difficult? Is relationships Clay, hard? Even, it is? It is? Really? <laughs> no. Come on. Oh, come on. No. Yeah, okay. Isn't it easy? It's what? In a room full of women, it's so easy. Because, because we Don't women look. are so easy. We are, aren't did we? You hear, did you hear him? I, I did. He's trying to say I in front know. of all of us, he's going to say it's easy. That's his story. Yeah. We're just, <laughs> men are the difficult ones and women are so easy. Right? Isn't that the yeah. truth? Yeah. Yes, I thought so. We're very easy. We're, we're so easy. We're so easy. <laughs> we're vanilla. <laughs> especially, right? especially women like you or, do or like me that have careers. I think That's it's right. so easy. That's right. We just sit around eating bonbons. We yeah. don't do anything. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you um, did this. So career. then I did this and love that. So it was a, just a limited collection. Love that. And then clothing. And then from there, I um, I would come home to the studio late at night, and and I just thought of an idea that said, what would a world be if musicians, dancers, writers, and actors could all connect, create, and collaborate all in one world this is what in I'm real time? About. Yeah. And um, and what would this world look like? And so kind of the birth of Soho Muse started. Um, and then, and actually in, more in kind of my own like, reality, I was on tour and I would lose a dancer in 24 hours. You'd lose a makeup artist and people that, you know. Yeah. And so um, management would have to go to 15 different agencies in order to find that talent. I'm like, what if there was actually a vetted membership based site that you could actually go in and you could find this talent? And I'm like, if you could do that in the local world, community you could do that globally we should be using some because you may you or may not know this but the biggest mm -hmm. secret behind what we do yeah. is well the, well the formulas we know work they help people right i did i invented some patents that basically regenerate and help with the skin hair and nails with aging and then the nuclear waste so that stuff is important and i don't i can't make claims so i have to be very careful unless it's a pharmaceutical and then we have to go after an indication but the real secret is, is our creativity because we have so many people that will come in, for example, Clay's wearing these glasses. They'll say, you can't go in the interview and wear glasses. Mm. And the other day I just said to someone, it's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to be him. I'm going to be me. And then that works because it's interesting. And you know, this, what happens in the United States is not what happens in Italy and France. Right. Mm. And actually when you go over to the Middle East and you go over to Europe and you go over to Asia, this creativity is there. Right. And yes. I've spent my, the majority of my adult career has been traveling mm -hmm. for whatever reason. If you ask me how that happened, I have no idea. I didn't plan that. I do love to travel. I don't like to fly, but I love to see new experiences. And it's interesting. You have to be who you are because mm -hmm. if you really want to grow something, you can't be worried every second about what everyone thinks. You mm -hmm. just got to be who you are. You and then do. you've got to, partner with people like we're partnering with mm -hmm. the different projects we're doing to really at the same time give back we do always and that's what you've done yes you've grown what you're doing but you're also involved in these projects 
And I would say you are unique because I understand that people that come from families and people that have wealth and power are involved in projects. But I have to be really candid with you to have your name blasted in front of me in these major things that have to do with science or business mm -hmm. or female empowerment. I, I have this, this thing. If I hear something three times or it's in front of me, I pay attention. Mm. So I bet I heard your name five times within a week. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a wait minute. minute. <laughs> and I'm going to be, and everyone's like, you guys have got to meet. You guys have got to meet. And um, I'm so excited to be in all these projects mm -hmm. that we're going to do great business things together. Yes, I believe yeah. that. I do too. Um, and I want to get Soho Muse out there. I want Thank us to you. use Soho Muse. Please. We had to figure out, we have to get with my husband and make sure that we're bringing this community into that. But I also love the projects like the First Ladies Initiative. Yes. Uh, Yolia was on earlier. Uh, Karen was not on today because Karen's traveling. I've been on the phone with her yep. a lot and her amazing photographer, yep. Michael, He's who loves He's you. He's <laughs> so sweet. How He's sweet so is good. he? How good He's is he? He's so fantastic. He's so amazing. He's amazing. Yes. He's so great. So um, it was interesting. He was like, how do you know her? And I was like, you would not believe how many times uh, I've heard her. That's this so week. sweet. That's but so amazing. he said amazing things about you. Yeah. You're in this circle of people that are trying to make these positive changes. And how did that happen? <sighs> um, that's a really, I, you know, that's a really good question because I look at you in the same way. It's like yours came obviously out of you know something that was important to you and something that you experienced. And I think that the way that you were raised it just to me feels yeah. like your values right yeah. um me i kind of i feel like you know i had a i had a profound car accident um at the age of 19 um i was told that i died during the car accident and it was the biggest shift in my life where um my entire face was smashed and i literally spent about a I year so no and and, yeah. and I didn't have any plastic surgery. Nothing happened. I have this little dimple that my ex called an angel's kiss. And it was um, really my kind of the beginning, middle, and end of, of uh, a moment where my life stopped and started. And it gave me a reason, and it gave me hope, and it gave me something that actually kind of started music, started my, my life, and started my hope. So I think it's just... That really was, um, you know, kind of changed my entire relationship with my parents, um, just everything. But your life hasn't been easy. No, it not hasn't. At not at all. Not even, no, it hasn't. Well, people have this misconception of, um, and I don't know if you know, I'm, I don't want to change subjects. There's a Greta who's over the World Influencer Awards at mm -hmm. the, um, the film festivals. I mean, she does all these different groups. We were mm -hmm. talking about this. Um, People think if you're born in a wealthy family or a powerful family, or if you achieve that, um, then it's easy. And it's it's really not. In fact, the more pressure you have, the more successful you've been, or the more you come from a family that succeeded, it's a lot of pressure. That's why there's such a high propensity of suicide. Yeah. And it's sad because you feel alone, right? So true. And you feel like this, this pressure. Yeah. On your shoulder and, and how I've alleviated alleviated that for myself mm -hmm. is to try to give more yeah. because it's it's lonely right yeah. so I'd love for you to share because I think one of the things we do as women is we highlight what we've done because it takes it's it's hard as a female to get to where you get in life mm -hmm. right and it takes a very strong woman to get there um, but it also takes a woman that's not willing to quit yes I'd love for you to talk about some of it because I know these Pivotal moments like the car accident, your mother, different things have been really hard. And I'd love for you to share just because I always want to help. I always want to help people watching for them not to just hear what we, how we've succeeded, but how we failed and how hard it's been to. Yeah, okay. yeah. for sure. Um, so um, I, in building this business, um, you know, I would say that a lot of the um, uh, people, tend to, and again, having the name that I yeah. was born with, um, as an artist, I never used the name, ever. Mm -hmm. It was really, really important to me that people saw and heard my music 
for the yeah, person that I, I was that. and that it really um, resonated that it was that it was um, that I was able to um, kind of come out into the world and that you would actually see and feel me and and that you know what I mean that you that there was no con there was no other connotations there was just you. it was just me yeah album is called I'm just me it's as raw it's as real it's it's everything and it's that in business the second that that name is ever brought out into the world it is it's a thousand different noises and voices and what people think so you may say she's from that she's this is she like that is that really the person is she real is mm -hmm. Half the people are like, is she really a Vanderbilt? There's another one. That's fun. That's, that's, all, that's that always fun? fun. I like that one. Yeah, I, I, people, by the way, have told me, it's interesting you say that, trying to tell me your political view, viewpoint, you're religious. And I'm like, how do you know that? Like, they, the reason I'm saying that, it's yeah. interesting how people think they know someone who they, they don't know. Yeah. No. Then they, they yeah. know you and they define you. Yeah, and then, then they define, are, and then and you they are what your family. Of course. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then in building your business, well, why haven't you completely funded the entire company? Why would you need any funding? Oh, Why do you need all of them? So that's got to be hard. It's really so because we know in business that it's better not to fund the company. We know in business that it's better to have investors, to have partners. We know, but the problem is when you have a family. If you are, I want to be. I want to say this very Hello. honest. Do, do we? Does <laughs> everyone hear this? No, I. Know. I this is very important. It's very Hello, important. Please say that. No, you just say this to all of your people. Oh, it's a hundred percent. So you can't sit in a room with male entrepreneurs or, or men that are going public and them not understand that you're not funding the company. You, sh you actually shouldn't fund the company. You know, from a, we know from a business perspective, which we self-funded root, but that's been very hard too, right? Because no matter how much money, so let's say you have a billion dollars, yep. right? You shouldn't self-fund everything. You nope. need to have investors. You need to have partners. You need to do either PPMs or angel investors or real VCs because otherwise you don't know business. And the funny thing is, I've had so many people take me aside and say, because I'm a female, well, you know, you, why wouldn't you do this yourself? Or I'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollars and I want 20 to 30% of your business, which happens to be a $500 million business. I'm not, excuse my can, maybe can, yeah. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. That's not what you should do. Yeah. You shouldn't self fund everything. And, and you got to know the worth of your company, right? Exactly. So I don't care who you are. I don't Sweet. care if you're a Rockefeller, a Vanderbilt, a Proctor. Or Ga I don't care. So I'm so glad you're not listening to people. No. Because that's not the right. That's not the you right. actually need the right partners, too. That's exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. So not only have I brought in investors, I have funded myself, right? But you also must go out and you must mm -hmm. get the company funded or it's not real. Yeah. So there is, and the, but it's always those connotations and it's really hard so that you're, and people don't realize that and you're never having those conversations and you're never able to actually be real enough to say that. So you're living in this and then people actually don't want to hear that either. They don't no. want to hear the sob stories because they don't want to ever no. feel that like it's ever bad or there's something wrong and no one ever wants to hear that. But you can't, it's, it, so here's what I think is hard about I'm just going to say this, having Go. money or <laughs> coming from a family or whatever, you think, I mean, I'm being Go. very honest. Yeah. You think, well, if, the, if I, you know, they don't need the money. And if they do need the money, why do they need the money? They must not be good at business. Exactly. And, well, their family had, you know, five, six, seven generations of money. So what? Like, in the end, if you're really from a family with money, then you really should be able to start businesses on your own. They should have taught you that you shouldn't just use the family money. Does exactly. that make sense? Exactly. And so this is a whole misconception and it's got to be harder. I'm just being completely candid that you're a female because right it's, too. it's, you have to be careful. You're right. You have to be strong. You can't make people feel sorry for you. You can't make people feel like you're weak. I think you've done a phenomenal job. Thank you. But I'm, I'm like and you, I've done the whole gamut. You've got, and, yeah. and then you also, as, as a, as a woman to a man to, you also want to be sexy too. You don't want to yeah, be. You don't have to be a feminist you all don't the have time. To be I say no, that. I'm sorry. Why do you want to be that? You, I don't want to be that I either. Don't want to be that. Like you want to be girly sometimes. You want to be able. You want to be able to be your be multifaceted. A exactly. Why can't I be? Why can't be a woman? Why can't? Why can't I be all of those I, things I, and that not be okay? And like I feel like we're. I feel like we're living in such a strange society. And I think men don't really understand 
what game, what, where we are right now. Yeah. And I think that women don't, I think we're really. I don't think women don't either. I don't either. So, I do, yeah. so okay, so that's so that's one side, right? Yeah. But. And I, I don't, and I say this all the time, I don't care what other people, who they are or what they choose. No. But if I want to be a female, I can be a female. Yeah. And that's okay. And that's can totally I please, me too. Can just I, let me yeah. be, just let me be me. 100%. That's, that's what I'm saying. Me yeah. too. And I feel like the most misunderstood person on the planet, and that's okay too, which is the name so, of my new book. What's it called? Misunderstood, but it's yeah. not. But yeah, I want to read that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, we'll push that so, one out thank too. You, thank like you, it. thank you, though. So, um, so then from there, what what I really started to see is in building this company and through kind of the meetings, the the being misunderstood, the um, getting into the room, but being in the room sometimes for absolutely all the wrong reasons yeah and but working through that and then trying to find the right teams so there's a lot in that and figuring all that out and and then really kind of looking at this and saying is this everything that i wanted and putting my music on hold in order to make this business happen the one thing the one thing that became the truth in all of this was that I built the company with three different tiers. So the younger tier, which is Soho Meets World, 14 and upwards. I went and I started talking to the schools. And that became my core. That became everything. Because when I looked into a student's eyes and I looked into the people who really didn't have as many opportunities, or I looked into kids who at FIT and like, where are they, where are they going to have internships? Where are they going to have their yeah. job opportunities? Like who are their mentors? Like where all of that? Then all of this became something that took on a life of its own, and and I'm like I know that I can really make a difference. Yeah. So we created a competition in February, and there were 16 schools, 16 states participated in this, and literally from the prestigious like the FITs of the world, but to the not so prestigious schools who don't have that many opportunities. Yeah. And we had our celebrity judges that critiqued. And then we built three fashion lines for these kids. And so that they got That's the amazing. opportunity to actually being able to, in September, come out, have their entire lines produced. We built their e-commerce stores. They're being mentored by really substantial, successful, huge fashion designers. And then get the opportunity to sell into retail. And I'm like, you know what? That That's is amazing. a game changer. That's a game that changer. That is. to me is like, you we're not just giving them, we're not just sending them off into the wilderness and giving them money. It's actually, we're walking them through the path of actually showing them how to build a business, how to get them from A to B and never leaving them alone. I didn't have a lot of mentors at all. I didn't or, either. Right? That's what I, re- I don't what understand that. I don't understand that at all. And being an artist, one of the hardest things on this planet like I believe mentors can change the trajectory of your entire life. Hundred percent, right? Hundred percent. I I feel like one of the things for me is I'm very candid and open with other women, yeah. especially you know, younger, older. Doesn't matter because I think people need to be honest. Thank Life's you. not easy. No. If you're gonna listen, we all cry. But the problem is, you've got to be strong or you're not gonna make it. And I listen. There's nothing wrong with crying. I always tell people, please cry because it's okay to cry, yeah. but to be a victim. And to think, well, someone's going to save me. The truth is, you wait for someone to save you, and no one's going to save you. I mean that. Like, I think as little girls, we're taught we're going to get married. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet this guy. He's going to save me. He's going to provide me with everything I want. Then you're going to keep waiting because no one's going to save you. Mm -hmm. You have to save yourself. You have to love yourself, which can be one of the hardest things. The hardest thing. But you have to. And by the way, I don't think... I really, I believe this, even though I'm not a parent, and God bless, I hope to God one day I am. I have a crazy Pomeranian Chihuahua who's gay, racist, and he hates women, he bites people, which is okay. And that's okay, that's, that's okay. A, it's not a reflection. <laughs> I that's swear okay to God, too. it's not a reflection. Listen, I'll support I, him his beliefs. Thing. Thank you so yeah. much, thank you it's so okay. much. It's okay, it's okay. And I love him all, yeah. for, for yeah. all the things that he is, and I swear to God. And we're going to be working in this you. animal. And it, exactly. Yeah. And, and, rescues, <laughs> and and I want to help and he's a rescue and I believe in rescues more than anything. I, I, had, I heard the story of your rescue just, from multiple yeah, people. Yes. <laughs> and, and Bark and Bitches is the greatest place on earth and I would 
do anything for them. Right? So, is that the cause you're choosing? No, no, no. It's Park and Bitches is the place where we got oh, okay. Bugs yeah. Malone, this crazy, crazy little animal that's the best. My husband loves the animal more than me, but just no. <laughs> just say. Wait, no, I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought, too. I'm like, wait a minute. What were we talking go. about? I'm like, oh, God. I totally I, lost I was, go. I was talking about yeah. how <laughs> no one's going to save you. Yes. And yeah. Yeah, but why did I go to Bugsy? I don't know, because you saved Bugsy. <laughs> Mm, you just so say him. I but with women, we're really not typically going to be saved mm -hmm. by just a person. No, we're not. We have to love ourselves. I don't know where you were going because I, I can't no read one, your mind. I, you can't? Why? Shoot. Where was I going with Bugsy? Why did I go to Bugsy? I'm so sorry. Um, that it was going to save me? No. No. Oh, God. There was a reason why I segued to my You job. were getting ready to make a good point. I, I was. Just, it was I so. No, it was not you. It was me. I was really right there with my dog. And <laughs> they, don't know. they have no idea. Um, okay. So you were saying you don't have children, but you have a dog. Yes. And he's a very important part of your life. Yes. Uh, that was before you criticized me. But anyway, we won't, we won't try that out. <laughs> you, you complimented him and then you criticized him. I did. Okay. He's got a lot okay. going on. That's but what you can see. But you're doing all these amazing things. because, And you, you I just want to say this because they're going to make us get out of this podcast. And you're going to have to come back very soon. Yes. But you have managed to somehow go through all the things you've gone through that haven't been easy and figure it out. And now you're in the process of really oh, taking your company yes. to another I'm level. I'm going to go with this. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think that you finding, this is what I was going to say, that no matter what age that you are, right? I don't think that there is, um, it's like you don't necessarily just find yourself and immediately like, oh, you're going to love yourself at this age. Or like, right, it just doesn't happen. That no. quick. It doesn't. And I think that whether it's the life lessons or whether your parents or what or or the life lesson that you may experience, like what happened with you in your 20s, what happened with me in my car accident, that actually lead you to yeah. finding that, to finding that love within yourself, right? It's not easy. And I think you have to find a way to be accepting of the fact that it is really hard. Like I was a people pleaser for so long, right? Yeah, me too. And yeah. it was really hard to to be able to to get past that. And I still have to fight with that. Yeah. And to be okay with the things that even in your insecurities to say, you know what? It's, that is me. Or I have to work at that. Or these, you know what I mean? And not just immediately say, okay, I'm going to like need to get to the, the perfection. I think yeah, because it's, to, yeah. it's so hard. I think we're striving so hard to get there. That was my point. I think we're trying so hard to yeah. that ultimate right now, right? To be the best of the best. And that's what I mean. Like women are just in this impossible. Impossible. You're never going to be perfect and you're never going to, you're never going to succeed in everything. No, right. And no. you're never going to have someone step in and save you from all of that. Cause it's part of our life. It is. And so, but you're a key figure. I just want to say this before we end. You're a mentor to people. I mean, honestly, you're helping people. Thank they you. need someone they can look up to. They need a mentor that doesn't really need anything from them just to be a mentor. Yeah. And you're doing that. And I think that's why there's so many people around me saying your name right now. Thank you. And uh, because I definitely think our platform is getting to the root of the issues, trying to cure the, the causes of why this there's so many issues around us, right, in our world. And we can do it. And we do it together. We can't give up. And I say this all the time. If you're going to be in a box and – not be part of the world and judge everyone you're around, then you're, we're going to fail because we've all got to be a part of the solution. No, but I feel like that's exactly what you have done. And that is what you were doing consistently. And I think the things that we can absolutely do and champion together because you didn't have mentors and I didn't. And I think that we can really help to build that out. And I mean, obviously you've got such an extraordinary platform, but I think that we can really help yeah. to champion so many different young people in that's so many different yeah. ways and giving them those opportunities. And that's the vision of my company truly is to be able to give these young kids around the world, creative opportunity to help these schools. It's amazing. That is absolutely my vision for that's the company amazing. to keep building and well, growing that way. I need to find out even more and more about everything. Cause you have so many platforms that are giving and are giving back. And um, I'm very excited that we're, 
doing all these things together and hopefully our platform can help give even more awareness thank to what you're doing. Thank you so much. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give. Thank Wait, you for having I, me. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was way too short. Thank I'm not very you. happy about that. <laughs> thank you.